So I welcome everyone that's here. I want to thank our speakers who've come here specifically to present and share their knowledge about sustainability within a residential urban context and how we can improve our homes to reduce energy use and better manage resources as part of sustainable lifestyle for better health outcomes as well. Very walkable, uh, very clearly legible main streets which would allow for bus route for public transport being a, a really important part of developing a sustainable community. So I think the, the term that we use at uh, SUHO is, is build tight, ventilate right. So you could choose, you can choose when your ventilation comes into the house uh, rather than just have it come through the materials or the cracks in the walls. If someone was to sell you a car and say, look, it's, it's fantastically ventilated because the materials are shoddy and the workmanship shoddy so that there's uh, air coming through those and then you'll be fine. You won't need to ventilate that, that yourself. So it's the same thing really with housing. And so that's what we're all about trying to help people improve the energy efficiency of their houses in the most optimised fashion. So there's been a lot of conversation around the winter solar gain, uh, but the summer solar gain is becoming more and more of a conversation. I guess there's the environment changes as well. I have over 20 years when it comes to dealing with thermal insulation coatings, primarily in the industrial side of things. So we understand what it's like working in oil refineries and globally. And so part of this conversation is about some of the technology we do, but also dealing with some of the myths as well. Has anyone seen this development at Norwood? Yeah. Oh my God, I would never want to live in that place in summer. I couldn't imagine how these little air cons are going to coat. So here's a recent aerial view of Parramatta in Darwin. And why would Darwin have all white roofs? Because it gets hot. Parramatta is facing similar heat issues and they're panicking about it. And all got black tiles, metal, dark roofs. Hardly any trees, hardly any green space. It's something, and they just recently overturned in New South Wales last year, I call a dark roof ban. Anything over 48 degrees, your air conditioner will no longer function properly. You just can't, it's a mechanical device, it starts to fail. Why not have a passive solution? And also the coefficient heat gain that's going up will cost you twice as much to run in the future. And here's basically the future where it's gonna be. It's a passive solution that reduces CO2, reduces energy costs, keeps you safe and keeps you cool. And basically cool surfaces do make sustainable sense passively. So our company Adelaide Vertical Gardens is a small local business. We produce and install custom sized uh, garden beds. All traditionally used material like metal, plastic and wood, they found that have big disadvantages. In metal boxes, uh, your plant feel like on the fry pan. We've got Australian education in horticulture and landscape design. And then we used our engineering knowledge and our horticulture knowledge to create our own material. And I will explain. It's polystyrene inside and special render. So it's strong, lightweight, excellent insulation from high temperatures. As a result, our planter boxes is very, very effective in summer days. And even in the winter time, they can help your plant grow successfully. So pretty much I work on three different aspects, mainly when it comes to immune health. Obviously, it's a very complicated thing, but these are the things I see the most. Reducing chronic inflammation, which is a bit of an epidemic in our society at the moment. Enhancing mental health, in particular, reducing chronic stress and keeping your gut healthy. Now eating five to nine serves of vegetables a day, once we've had those things booked in, we can then stop thinking about them and we can focus more on what we've got to do during the day. So then we become more effective when we are working. And there's plenty of research to show that the preparing is the most important thing. How healthy our bodies are going into getting sick is the main thing to helping us get through sickness and and move on. Right, well, thank you everyone for coming and hopefully I'll let you know about the next one and thank you to our speakers too. Thank you very much. Thank you.